a good quality copolymer line, in this case, 10 pound hydroflow from Gardner. This is a nice smooth line with a low reflective surface and a high knot strength. The next, you need a hook you can rely on. My personal choice is a size 12 mugger. It's a small hook, a light hook, but very sharp, and you find that once they've tricked the fish's mouth, they're very likely to stay where you want them, in the bottom lip, and that means that you're gonna land the fish of your dreams. Right, let's have a look at how we wanna tie up our end tackle. Let's tie a zig rig then. The first job is to tie a very small overhand loop in the end of what will be your hook link. This loop only wants to be under a centimetre in size because you're only going to be using a small piece of zig rig foam to lure the fish into biting later on. Next, strip off the amount of line that you'll need for the length of your hook length. In this case, it's only a shallow lake, so I only need about five and a half foot. Now, we're simply going to attach the, the hook using a knotless knot. This is a very popular knot that can be used for all manner of materials, whether it's fluorocarbon, braid, or high quality copolymers. If you put the hook link in through the back of the eye and put it up until the loop is flush to the back of the hook and then whip the knot round. Normally about seven or eight times is ample and pass the end of the line back through the hook going towards the point of the hook. This is really important and I recently had a guy at a show come up to me and he couldn't work out why he kept losing fish and it was simply because he was putting his knotless knot through the wrong way on the eye. Always have the end of the hook link going through the eye on the inside towards the point. Pull it through once again and this whipping knot will keep itself firmly in position and offer high knot strength across a lot of different materials.